torn the record books apart and the seven times Embassy World Champion has once again reached a world semi-final. Will you welcome the brilliant Stephen Hendry? Thank you very much, Hazel, and the excitement in the Crucible Theatre is incredible. Everyone's been looking forward to this. There's a little bit of needle between the two players. That adds to it. They respect each other. Thank you. The first frame, Stephen Hendry to break. So for me, the greatest player that's ever picked the snooker cue up breaks off. And the gentleman at the table now, for me, the greatest natural talent the game has ever seen. It doesn't get any better than this, Willie. Well, I was often nervous when I was playing, but I can honestly feel this is the most nervous I've ever been in the commentary. I'm just so excited to think that we've got the semi-final of this great championship with the two of the greatest players ever playing against each other. <laughs> Unlucky. One. <laughs> the audience are really involved already, but what a terrific start. Just a little bit too much pace. I just hope that both players play to the top of their form. Well, if one of them plays badly, they going to get uh, heavily beaten because these two players are very close to being at the top of their form. One, Ronnie O'Sullivan. <coughs> There's one thing for sure. If either player gets half a chance, they're going to go for it. And there's that half chance. Stephen pushed a red towards the corner pocket. But Ronnie's got to do quite a bit with the cue ball to get into good position. Can't just drop it in and hold for the black, so not easy to control the white here. Well, that was a half chance that's got away. And that makes things a lot easier. He wouldn't have actually done too much Four damage Stephen there Henry. if the white had stayed on the table. But now an absolute certain opening red. One. Ron has uh, been having a bit of a trouble with his stomach this week and he's been taking hot water. Six. There you can see him just trying to warm his hands up and uh, obviously having a few sips of that hot water. He's okay now, he doesn't feel ill in any way. Seven. Well, the way he played in his quarter final, uh, if I could play like that, I wouldn't mind being ill all year, will he? But he looks very focused again. One of the rare occasions where you don't see Stephen Hendry going into the pink there because it was such a big target to go into the reds. It's a little unfortunate to have finished well. hampered. Touching ball. Right, this is not easy. This is a risky one because where's the white going to go? Tough bridging.
That was the problem. 13. Couldn't control the cue ball. The pink may pot, but he's going to need the extension on his cue and the rest. Don't know if he can just reach it without putting the extension on. No, he needs that. He's deceivingly tall, Stephen Hendry. Around the six feet mark. Well, that was a heavy contact, I'm nearly certain, 13. because the pink Stephen seemed Hendry. to... It seemed to straighten up there. <laughs> Let's just have another look at this. Yeah, that definitely got a kick. You could hear a pin drop in the crucible at the moment. Look at that magnificent arena. There's no better place to be for a game of snooker. One. So this is the first real chance in this frame. There's been a couple of half chances to each player, but this is the first chance he's had, or either player have had, with balls in open play. He would be disappointed not to get at least 40 from here. Eight. Nine. Although just looking at the four reds and the little triangle of reds, they might all be covering each other. Certainly the three round the pink spot, nothing available there. So he might just have to nudge into them here. He was always going to leave this one to the left corner. That has freed at least four 16. reds. Seventeen. Twenty-four. I think what we're going to see in this semi-final is a shot that Ronnie played a couple of shots ago. The first chance to get the try to open up most of the game. Thirty-two. He looks focused. Thirty-three. Ronnie will be trying to finish low on this red so he can bring other reds into play. See how he's played the white there? Purpose of finishing low so he can open the bunch and still be on the pink. And this is once again a perfect example when you watch these two great players. You see them leave the, always leave themselves in a position to 41. win the frame at one visit and that was a key example there. Uh, wondering how many centuries there will be in this match. There's one thing for certain, there will be more than two. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Yes, you mentioned century breaks there. Uh, Stephen Hendry holds the record here in the Embassy World Championship with 16 centuries in 2002. And Ronnie O'Sullivan, to date in this year's Embassy 54. World Championship, has had 10 centuries. 
Yes, you would have to suggest should Ronnie O'Sullivan go on to win the title, there's every chance that that record could be broken. 55. Just one more red needed to take the opening frame in a match that has been so eagerly awaited for, for possibly the last four or five days. 62. And I'm just wondering, Willie, how many frames are going to be won with just one visit? That's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Dennis. Of the uh, number of frames they need, of course, 70. I would think that at least three quarters 71. of the frames will be won at one visit. Removing the pink to clear the path for the red to give himself a chance of making that century. Seventy-eight. Well, this is exactly how he played in his quarter-final when he made five centuries. There's the old left hand for quite an awkward shot as he overdone it. He might be snookered. Eighty-five. It'll be difficult to keep it going from here. Played it with a lot of check side to try and hold for the green, so no century. But what a start for Ronnie O'Sullivan. That break of 85 gives him the opening frame. Some amazing facts there. I Thank think the you. key one Second for me frame. was the fact that Stephen Hendry is obviously the only player to, to have had more than 100 centuries at the Crucible, and they've had over a thousand competitive centuries between them. What an interesting run of stats they were. You might say Ronnie has got the pace of the table. A new cloth on the table, now that we're down to just that single table in the middle of the Crucible Theatre. Must be struggling, Dennis, with the circulation or something, because it the Crucible's never cold, is it? Funny enough, uh, in this afternoon session, I've seen both Matthew Stevens and Graham Dot blowing their hands, as, because it's been really hot here since we've started. Choice of reds, the one behind the black or the one in bulk. The one behind the black is dangerous. Good pot, he's going to need another one. The cannon on the red, stop the white. Oh, I think everyone in the Crucible Theatre thought the yellow was going in as well there. Six. But that spoiled the position. 
don't think he can see enough of this red past the green. It's tough to get both of these reds safe. He'd like to play thin off this one, but he needs to cover that one with the brown and the other one with the green, and uh, this is tough. Yeah, there's no problem leaving it safe. He wants to make it difficult for Stephen Hendry because that's the way these players play. They just don't put the white in a safe position. They want to put it in a position where it makes it really difficult for their opponent. That's why they're two brilliant safety players when they want to be. So if you just clipped off the red next to the yellow and put the white back where it is now, it would be a straightforward safety for Stephen. That's why Ron is thinking of something a lot more difficult. Six. Ron, you're a clever seven. shot. That's a clever shot. Well, the miss. Four, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Uh, this is going to be a tricky one to replace, even though very little moved. Ronnie might not even accept the ball being put back here, because he can play a pretty good safety shot himself. Just come off the red next to the green and leave the white over behind the brown. He just glances off the red, off the side cushion, and sends the red out in the middle of the table. He could get a snooker. And get a snooker he has. No problem at all with resting in the pack. Will he go off one cushion or two? Touching would help here. Touching ball. That means that Ronnie can find a gap down behind green and brown again. Got to be a bit careful. Not just hard enough. So that's a bit of a mistake. It's always easy to do that when you're striking down on the cue ball. You don't get as much pace as you think you're getting. Yes, I think the fact that he played off an extra cushion as well, the two cushion escape, I think he'd have guaranteed the pace. The fact that he went three cushions certainly took the pace out of the cue ball. Is there a attempt here somewhere for Stephen here? He might be playing one of these shots to open the pack and get a safety. He does that quite a bit. The reds haven't spread as well as he intended. But he didn't get the white back onto the cushion. This doesn't appear to have got his timing yet, uh, Stephen Hendry. He's mishit a couple of shots now already in this opening session of this semi-final. Tricky little safety, this. That's why he's given it so much thought. If he goes off the right side of that red that's near the left corner pocket, the in off's on. Just over a minute for Ronnie to work out a shot. I suppose it was worth waiting for. One. He just couldn't see a safety shot on. So when you can pot like this, what a great asset. 
And what a beautiful shot he played, Dennis, with the cue ball as well. The only one he was leaving was the one nearest the cushion, but with the black out of play, Steam would have had to screw back for the blue. So he almost made it into a shot to nothing from there. Great thinking. <laughs> Always played the kiss on the black. What a... <laughs> he never stops thinking of moves. Unlucky. Six. Touching ball. Six. Awkward. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Awkward queuing, but he hasn't left a great deal. He's left an easy starter for Stephen, but the pink and black are out of the game at the moment. Now, this could be perfect. <laughs> and we all know the shot that Stephen Hendry likes to play into the reds and pink. In fact, just looking at it, he might be better just canning into the pink here and just freeing it. That was a much better shot than trying to scatter them all. Six. Yes, delicate little shot, that. Seven. Doesn't have the perfect angle on the green or brown. He's virtually straight on the blue, but I think to avail great position, it's swinging the green round at least two cushions. How's the pace? It's a little bit hard, I think. It's going to go in between the red and black. Could be a little bit awkward. Ten. Just okay. Can sneak this one back in. One to the right of the pink. Eleven. Well, if he finishes anywhere near either circle, he'd leave himself nicely on a red. So he's got quite a margin for error here. Not an awful lot of room in between red and black to get nicely on the pink here, so he's got to be a little bit careful. Fifteen. See, the, the gap wasn't big, and has he overrun it? Well, the only other colour is the yellow, and to get back up the table here, he'd have to hit cushion first, and it looks as if the white would go automatically over towards the blue. He's got to hit there before the yellow to try and flick it in and get the white round. Well, he's done well to get the white that far up the table. And his face with a difficult red, either the one that's nearest the pink spot is potable. Not bound to get onto the pink from that, at least if he plays this red he could get onto the pink. The red down the right hand side. The cue ball's going to be near the cushion though if he plays that, so the alternative is the one on the pink spot, but doesn't like that one either. I think if he plays this one, he'd be screwing back for green, brown or yellow. I don't think he'll risk playing for the pink. Eighteen. Well, that tells you how well Stephen Hendry's queuing. But he's got to play another good shot. He's got quite a margin for error to drop on those five reds. There's a one good positional shot here and get the pink back onto its spot. It then becomes a frame winner, but until that pink's on its spot, it's not guaranteed. Twenty. 
Well, he mustn't have quite had the angle on the yellow to get the white any further up the table because this is difficult now. What a risky shot if he tries to pot this red and cannon the other. If he pots that red and cannons the other, he'll be on the pink, but it's a risky one. He might try and come around the back of it and back down the table. Played the cannon. 21. And he played it well. Always under hit that. He's in to hit that by a long way. Meant to put a little bit of side on to widen the angle. And he played the stun shot and nothing happened. You can see he's not happy. This will still cut back, but it's risky. Can't avoid the cannon on the next red. Twenty-eight. Well, I mentioned at the top of the programme half a chance they'll take it on. I think this is going to be a boxing match, Dennis, rather than a snooker match. They're going to be punch for punch, break for break. And who's going to weaken after two 34. days? 34. He's talking about boxing matches. What about all this nonsense, really, of uh, Mark King going in the ring with Quinton Hahn? I think it's, uh, it's a bit stupid, personally. Absolute nonsense. Thirty-five. It'd be a bit like two top boxers out playing in the Crucible Theatre. I don't think so. The break goes to forty-one. The lead twenty-five. So still not guaranteed to win the 41. frame at this visit. He'll try and leave an angle to break into the two reds here, because the black's clearly available as well, but just looking at the scoreboard, I wonder if he'll play for the loose one. It's 42. too hard. Not guaranteed a pot of colour now. One thing for certain, he'll go for it. And the angles will get him on the red. So 28 in front, 29, 44. 35. Needs at least two of these remaining reds with high value colours. Yes, a big opportunity of playing down for the black so he can kiss into the other red to try and bring that into open play. He's not n quite come far enough. There's the difference. 36. 52. So the red and the black would be enough, so we can just drop this red in. I've never seen both these players uh, so focused. Wonderful shot. Wonderful shot. Frame ball, the black. Oh, two frames. Two one visit clearances, or two one visits to win the frame. Stephen Hendry. And Mark Rowe, the European 60. Tour golfer, had a few words last night to wish each other good luck. Mark's playing in Italy. And Mark uh, rang Stephen while we're out in the restaurant 61. to say hello. Mark Rowe shot 64 today in Italy to take the lead in that tournament. Hendry's uh, going to certainly draw level in this tournament. 61. 
Well, Ronnie well, O'Sullivan remains seated, and we knew it was going to be a classic. It started just that way. We're all square at one all. Thank you, settle down, third frame, Stephen Hendry to break. Thank you, Hazel. I think the only way we'll get a scrappy frame with these two is if the black, pink, the blue, the yellow, green and brown go safe on the cushions. <laughs> I've never actually seen that in all the years I've been commentating. Blue. Blue, pink and black I've seen a few times. It's amazing the number of times from the break-off shot a red goes next to the black, though. <laughs> that can make things a little bit awkward. The red going up the other end of the table. And what does Stephen Hendry want to do? He wants to get it back up here. And believe it or not, he took the pot on. I didn't think that would go past the green. That was quite a difficult pot he took on, but... Thank That's you, the way Stephen there. Hendry's always played the game, and he won't change for anyone. He said that in one of his interviews. He'll keep going for them as long as he plays this game of snooker. Yes, it was very close to going in. And Ronnie, of course, it's all about this shot, whether he gets the right angle on blue or bought colour to go into the pink. One. He's played for the blue to get on to the pink. Now, this could actually bring the black into play here. The cluster of reds, if it's the pink full ball, there's a red that may come straight down and move the black into play as well. So we could get both big colours in play with this shot. Yes, didn't, uh, didn't play to kiss the pink there, just played to loosen the pack and he's done it nicely. Six. Watch the cue he's played that kiss exactly like that. He played a lot harder if he wanted to go in the pink, so that's what he played. Seven. Yes, I think the crowd appreciate that very difficult pot. The hampered queuing. They're still far from straightforward here. Red, obviously, to the left of the pink is available. That's if the pink is on its own spot at the moment. Now, that shot tells me that 13. he might try and get the black into play here. But this will have to be so precise. Well, 14. he's cannoned the red and managed to get round, but it's still very difficult. <coughs> Just 
not quite hard enough to make this shot a certainty because if he's trying to nudge the pink into 90. play for the corner pocket, he's going to have to kiss the pink just right. He's not bound to knock this on. Yes, played 20. nicely. That was a good shot. He had to really get into the cue ball for that to be kissed nicely, that pink. If he'd have underscrewed the cue ball, he would have kissed the pink quarter ball and knocked it towards the middle of the cushion. Oh, is there a red on? He obviously thinks he can get onto the one two away from the black. 26. I think he is on that red. And he's got an angle to get to the pink, I think, from it. Plenty of room there. 27. <laughs> he's having to work so hard for this. He's straight again on the pink, so he'll have to leave the one at the back of the pack. And but he's keeping it going. Yes, we didn't think Stephen Hendry could conjure a frame-winning clearance from the position of the balls in the last frame. This is very similar. I don't think he's on it this time. Is he I think he's left it a bit short. That could be the end of break. There you see it. You'd think Ronnie would be reluctant to bring the black into play here. Yes, he's uh, left it tied up. I thought he was playing the Ronnie red into the black, but he's kept that tight for a moment. Well, a measly 33. Back to normality. We probably won't see a great deal of tactical and safety play, but I'll tell you, they're pretty good at it when they want to be. Ronnie straight away is taking this difficult cut on. And the reason he's missed that is because he put so much right-hand side on it. To avoid the cannon into the reds, just watch the way the white straightens up here. But he's left a slight chance for Stephen. Yes, it would have been a lot easier if he could have played it playing ball, but the red on the left-hand side cushion was uh, stopping that, so he had to screw it round two cushions. Hasn't left a, what appears to be a pot on, but you, you're never confident when you say that with these two guys. You can see that one, look, at the possible angle. But can he get the cue ball into play, or is he going to try and nudge the black into play? He doesn't need the black, he's 33 in front, but that's the angle that the cue ball will be taking. Unlucky. One. He's in, he had a little skip there, Ronnie, <laughs> when he spotted that. He was so annoyed that he didn't knock the black in. There's that little <laughs> skip. No problem skipping for Ronnie. He runs seven and eight miles a day. So he's a pretty fit young man. Normal circumstances, really? we'd be saying push a colour safe here, but <laughs> the way these two guys playing, not necessarily the case. 34 One, in front. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Slightly out of commission, the green, but not safe. <coughs> it's got to be careful, that red on the side cushion again. Got to miss that on the way back. <laughs> that was amazing. It started with one clap and it built up into uh, almost everyone in the crucible appreciating that safety shot. 
And what was nice, Dennis, it was appreciated by Ronnie O'Sullivan as well. He tapped the cue on the table quite a few times. I wonder if Stephen will do the same here, because that was a tough safety. Not this time, because of the whites in open play. He's got to be careful here if he plays this, because he can get the double kiss. That's what he's looking for, and he needs a little thinnish one. Got the perfect cue ball, but the red has gone towards the corner pocket. It must be very tight. Yes, just slightly overhit the line there, otherwise this red wouldn't have been on. Look at this, he's just playing with a touch aside to swing it round the brown. Well played. One. Well, Ray Reardon right up in the gods here in the Crucible Theatre. He dominated the game of snooker in the 70s. Five. And there's a I was going to say, there's a gentleman sitting in the studio who dominated the game throughout the Six. 80s, Steve Davis. And we've got one out in the Crucible Arena who dominated the game throughout the 90s. Seven. That's the man that set such standards in this game. But he's playing against a player who could dominate the game throughout the year 2000 until 2010. Well, what he has done for certain is dominated this frame. And he's only 14. three reds and three colours away from making this uh, opportunity to take a 2-1 lead. 15. Standards first class. I don't think we've seen one pot missed by each. And I don't think we've seen a bad safety shot yet. Well, you would have thought they were both more or less level on the pot success rate, but Ronnie's just slightly ahead, 94%. I mean, that is incredible. 88 is pretty good as well. 23. Just the black. The black will go back onto its own spot now, which means that the two reds will be available, so it doesn't have to play a cannon. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Well, I don't know how he's made a fifty from here. Oh, we got a kick. What a dreadful contact 47 there. Forty-seven and frame. Well, he didn't win the third frame with one visit. It took two visits, a break of thirty-three and a break of forty-seven. And Ronnie O'Sullivan goes into the lead at two frames to one.
Thank you. Fourth frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. That's enough. Thank you. Yes, that's a good point John made, because when we looked at the pot success rate, that tells it all already that Stevens probably had a couple of long pots missed. And this is going to be the key, shots like this. This could be improved, of course, if this disappears. There's enough room just to stun it off the cushion and just drift around the back of the black into the same pocket. But now he's playing with topspin, I think. I can't quite tell where he's going to, which side he's going to go. Oh, played to hold it and miss hit it. Yeah, he chose the most difficult pot from a positional point of view and he didn't catch hold of it at all. It was one of those funny angles that he had, but he, he wanted to play it with lots of bottom just to try and hold it there, this side of the black, and just miss hit that one. That's, well, that's an unusual mistake because you always know when the angle's there for an in-off. Um, Ronnie, well, I think the fact that he missed the pot, maybe that was why the uh, white went in. This is a thin one that he's left into the middle. And it's a thin one if he takes the one that's up near the ball cushion. You get all ages watching the game of snooker, and there he's got his hair, a little bit of gel on. He's got away with it. He's got away with it. It might go into the corner pocket, and don't be surprised if Ronnie doesn't have a go at it. I'm just playing the snooker up behind the brown. Has he got it? Or is there enough sticking out of that red to the left of the black? This is a very big target to get in behind green and blue here off three cushions. Both the two cushion route, but the same result. Green and blue with the target. Just that he wanted to be right in the side of the pack. I did say that the red's not potable in the middle. At first glance, I thought that red was available. It's not. We're just coming up to 44 minutes of play. We've already had three frames. Some sessions this week, we haven't had a frame in 43 minutes. The thing that's going to fascinate me as well is which player is going to go for the more difficult chance. Because Ronnie will have a go at any sort of pot as well, but it'll be interesting to see how that stat pans out. Now oh, this is a bit awkward now with the red up just past the blue spot. If you play the white up into the safety zone you've got to make sure you avoid the cannon on yellow, green and brown to make sure you get the white near the cushion otherwise that red could be on.
There's a possibility of glancing off the red to the left there, but and getting up. But you see, if he hit the yellow or brown, he'd leave that red on. That's why he's removing the red that's near the blue spot. And that gets it back to normality now, this frame. Played that shot really well. Quite a tough one that Stephen took on there, and that. Well, it's left a bit of a chance for Ronnie. This one will sneak down the cushion, and he would get onto the black. Oh, he doesn't like it. <laughs> yes, I think playing ball, uh, he would uh, not be able to hit it slow enough. He'd have to play with a lot of left hand side, and that's too tough. I would think. He'd love to have a go at this one. He's already thought about this shot for just over 50 seconds. So he's certainly not taking any undue risks. One. Well, that hit the cushion. A surprise that went in. And if he gets a little cannon right here, he's going to open everything up. There's one shot when he pots the black. If he nudges the red, he'll open three or four of them. He doesn't have to hit it with any pace, just gently into it. The one in the middle. That's the one he can cannon. Yes, yeah, like to have cannoned it four ball. He's going to have to push through this Eight. other red. Nine. Didn't think that opening red was going in, Willie, did you? No, I don't think it would have gone in on the table they played the first match on, you know, the, the left-hand side of the two tables before the crucible screen was lifted. Very rarely do they go in off the near jury, as it were, then, and I was very 16. surprised that that went in. Which tells me straight away the pockets are quite nice. 17. Yes, we'll just show you that too. But I think with it being a brand new cloth, 24. the tent to slide in off, but that hit quite a ways down the cushion. That was a bit surprising. There's one good kiss away from making this a frame win opportunity. There are loose reds on. You see, as they always do, these great players, they're into the pack at the first opportunity. This time it hasn't worked out. 32. Can't play up to the balk area because of the red next to the green. The red he's looking at. It's a difficult one, but nothing surprises me with Ronnie. He might slot this into the left middle pocket. 32. A good effort. And I think he's left it. I do believe there's a path through to it. And if Stephen can avoid the cannon onto the yellow, he'll finish on a colour. Yes, I think if that wasn't tight on the cushion, that would have been a certainty. So Ronnie was a little bit fortunate there once he'd missed the, the black, not to have uh, left an easier red than that.
Ronnie has choice of reds, one down the left or the long one down the right hand side. Well, is there a little bit of tension creeping in, even for these two great players? Ronnie's been very fortunate there, to say the least. Had he not have nestled on that red, he would have left the lot on. It's so close to the red, he can't pot the one up between blue and green. And this is awkward. Oh, that was well played. One. A real keen <laughs> Stephen Hendry supporter, that lad. That was uh, not as easy One. as it looked. Stephen Hendry. That was a real pressure shot. When you're digging down on a ball like that, any unwanted side, it pushes into the cue ball. He might have been playing that with a little bit of left unintentionally, and it's just squared it up. He was disappointed because that was a chance to get back into this frame and possibly win it. He's almost assured of losing it One. now. Mid session interval coming up after this frame. We've got four sessions to play in this semi final, and Eight. you always play them as little mini sessions. Your aim is to try and win it 3 1. Nine. If you could win a session 4 0, it's a big bonus, but you're always looking for them three out of the four frames. Yes, during this match, it wouldn't surprise me at all if. Um a session was one kind of six two or seven one because if one really gets in his stroke he can run away with the session 15 but if either player lost six two or seven one the match wouldn't be over 16 that was played left-handed and just a little bit too much pace but i do believe a lot of the crowd at times they don't realize that Ronnie has switched hands in the old days if you potted one left-handed uh, that's if you were a right-handed player you used to get a big round of applause for it you were the only player I think ever played left-handed in the olden days <laughs> perfect queuing yes the grip Fred Davis used to be quite good with his opposite hand as well. But the only reason I played left-handed, I was useless with the rest. Just going to avoid the cannon on green, red and brown here. Wants to come through that gap. 22. Mm, just a bit betwixt and between. He I'm sure he hadn't made his mind up whether to play with the yellow or the blue. He's in the hit for the blue and over hit for the yellow. <laughs> 22, <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan. Another unexpected miss. Okay, he was playing left-handed, but he doesn't miss many. I think there was a red underneath his body that was putting him off a little bit there. And that wouldn't have been so disastrous, bar for kissing red and green into play as well, what? because that would have been a, a saviour for Ronnie. But the fact that he's brought them into play, can get right back into the frame now, Stephen. He's got two difficult reds though, near either side cushion.
He's now got one difficult red. <laughs> Nine. If it's half a chance, he'll always play that type of shot to bring a red into play. Fifteen. It appears now that, Dennis, that everything's potable, really, because the red, I think, and ball will pass in between brown and yellow. So the key shot now is just getting rid of the red that's nearest this cushion. And uh, even though he's 34 behind, Stephen Henry's gone favourite for this frame. Now, it is a little bit risky here to try and develop this red and stay on the colour, so he might just leave that. Twenty-two. And that shot tells you that the red goes because if he can drop nicely in behind it, he's got quite a margin for error. Anywhere near the circle, that red will be on. just depends on the angle. He doesn't have to be... Just be a little careful I just wonder whether you leave the angle on the brown if you can screw on and off the cushion or maybe even the yellow to get up for this last red. Now if you can avoid the camera on the brown, the yellow is perfect, but I don't think you can. I think he will be able to manage it, will he? Because it looks like it's going to cannon into the brown, but he might be able to arc it round it. If the green's straight, he can screw straight back from this. Now just watch this. See how he's digging into the white there? No. It's a tough one, this. Mm, didn't get into it. Didn't get into that at all. I'm sure he played to finish on the cushion almost, to leave choice of pockets. He's very good with the rest, but he'll have to be to pot this. Fantastic shot. 32. Fantastic shot. That's for me the shot of the match so far because of the pressure on it. That was either a chance for two all or certain to go 3 1 behind in that one shot. The green's a little bit awkward. He'll have to judge this one to drop on the yellow. Oh, he's got a horrendous kick. The white has stopped dead. The Even only good thing about that is covered the path, but that was so unlucky. The white stopped dead, the blue went off mine, but he's going to be in big trouble. He's going to be snookered. Oh, if it hits a knuckle. I was going to say, if it had a hit the top knuckle, the yellow would have come across the table. Now, just have a look at this. <laughs> oh, dear. Nobody deserves that. That is so unlucky. Mm, this takes some swerving. Oh, <laughs> oh. it too much. And this four. He's now 21 sword. behind. Now this could be a problem here. The miss has been called. Now if he misses again this time, <coughs> he has to hit it on the third try. Not because he's going to have the three miss rule, but because he'll need a snooker. So this is a must to hit it this time. There'll be too much pressure on the next one. And he's got to play the swerve because the uh, angle's not there to come off the cushion. <coughs> he's got it. Well, well a little smile from Stephen. That's the end free of frame ball. because he's left a free ball. That kick on the blue, I feel, has cost Steve in this frame. There could be one glimmer of hope, Dennis, couldn't there? He's 25 in front. The blue, of course, makes 27. So if he doesn't get on the yellow, I know K will be snookered in behind the black Luke. if he doesn't get on the yellow, but there's a slight, slight chance yet for Stephen to have another chance in this frame. 
Yes, he's not going to pop the yellow here, but he's certainly going to be snookered again. Now, if he gets out of the snooker, 27 behind with 27 Two. on. There could be some life in this frame. Two. Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's going to have to be another swerve. And, you know, a similar type shot is on. If he hits the yellow on the left-hand side, he could go in off. But, well, maybe he can see it. He could get in behind the brown with this. And he would have had the snooker, but for the kiss on the green. <laughs> the last three shots he's played, he's had an enormous kiss on the blue, got in off there, and then the kiss on the green. He's had three bits of bad luck, one after another. <laughs> really long frame, Miss Dennis, 21 minutes. <laughs> 10, 16, and 13, the first three. Oh, what a shot he's played here. This is a snooker. Ronnie tapped the table there. Can you imagine if Stephen was to put the remaining colours and we had a respotted black? I mean, the atmosphere is electric at the moment. What would it be like if we got to that stage? Got to be careful of the double kiss here, playing the safety. Oh, this is excellent, I think. Ooh! Ronnie will take this on, the fact that he only needs one of these colours. a long way so there is quite a bit of tension out there <laughs> another little kick there took the pace out of it but he won't be too disgruntled with that but he's had three bits of adversity here and I think that may be another one thinking about it because he could risk rolling it dead slow getting in behind the blue these tables, that shot could turn a little bit. He didn't go for that risky shot, made sure to get the yellow safe. Yes, he perhaps felt that he may have kissed the blue a half ball, but it was key, as Dennis suggested, to get the yellow safe. He's going to be hampered here with both black and pink with his uh, waistcoat, so he's going to have to be careful when he's stretching over here. The up and down safety is no real advantage here because he could kiss the blue with the yellow. Well, what he was going to try there was swing it right around the angles, but he knows that there's a lot of risk with that shot. Try and get behind the black, but he's changed his mind. He's just playing the screw shot. He's pushed it towards the pocket, has he? Well, that is pretty safe. I think from what we've seen in the opening exchanges in this match, Ronnie will be disappointed at two all. Henry will be delighted. best from Stephen there but it's a very tough pot will Ronnie take it on <coughs> he didn't and he got the double kiss and he's been very fortunate oh, this is uh, no certainty to get safe if he plays the negative shot just to push the yellow on the cushion he'll be in trouble 
Can he play around the back of the green? Get white in behind the black? Well, he just took a real risk here. Took a real risk and it's worked. I think he might have preferred it not to go in. Well, you could tell by the smile on Stephen's face. He put everything into getting the snooker there. And that was yellow unlucky down. for the Thank yellow you. to go in, really. Now, can he slide past the blue with the cue ball and get in behind the black? No, he's going to have to stun it. And he's potted the green. <laughs> One would suggest that's a fluke, Dennis. <laughs> That's one of the best pots he's never played. <laughs> even even Ronnie's smiling at that. But look where the pink and black are now. Mm, the full ball kiss, not wanted. Five, Stephen Hendry. That's a poor shot from Stephen. You've got to always keep the object ball safe, in that case the brown, he should have made sure that he kept it safe. Oh, what a time to have the white cleaned. The best player in the world I've ever seen at getting the object ball safe was our studio guest, Mr. Steve Davis. He was brilliant at not only trying to get snookers, but always made sure the object ball was never in open play, always hiding behind something. So it's one shot away, Ronnie, from 3-1. Stevens have been a bit unlucky this frame. I know he fluked the yellow there, but it's actually cost him the frame fluting, uh, fluke in the green, I should say. Because after the next shot, he left it on. Four. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Stephen Hendry's had enough, so no big breaks in that frame. But Ronnie O'Sullivan's army of supporters are delighted. He leads by three frames to one. Stephen Henry to break. That'll do. Pretty good break off from Stephen Henry there. All Ronnie can do, in fact, is just come off the side cushion and nestle in the pack. Ball. <coughs> Stephen this time purposely didn't want to get the snooker. He wanted to let Ronnie see enough of the reds to play a straightforward safety. Because he knew if he had have got the snooker running, would have played a similar shot, just off the side cushion, into the pack. Eight sessions to be played this evening. I'll rephrase that, eight frames. They're quick, but they're not that quick. They couldn't get eight sessions over. Uh, does the black pass the red? That's what Ronnie's looking at. It must be tight. I mean, if he goes a bit too far, he'll finish on the pink. If he happens to overhit that and, and runs out to there, he still have the pink into the middle pocket. One. He 
did well to get the white up onto the blue, and now he's got a terrific Six. chance. Seven. Because if the black doesn't go into the right corner, eventually he'll remove that red that's blocking it. Doesn't have to worry about it for quite a few shots yet. That's pretty tight, so you just concentrate Twelve. on pink for the time being. Well, decided to run through for the black in the opposite 13. corner, which gives him an easier chance to get rid of that awkward red. And we've, Dennis has already mentioned these sessions are eight frames. I think Henry's key now is to kind of not lose worse than 5-3 this session. 20. The possibility he could go 4-1 behind here, so got to stay in the match. You can't win the match in the first session, but you could possibly lose it. 21. So it's just a case of getting 5-3. I'd be happy with the way the frames have gone so far. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty-six. Ronnie made a break of eighty-five in taking the first frame. 37. Two breaks of 33 and 47 taking the third. There appears to be quite a few more here than that last contribution to win a frame. This could be a big one. 44. 45. 51. Look very easy. Oh, this is a bit of a stretch, Ronnie. <laughs> I think this little extension that Ronnie's using now, this six, seven inch extension, is only something he's had for the last couple of years. I can't remember him using one before, before that. 52. That's just gone enough. I don't think he can play it slow enough to hold for the red in the opposite corner, so he'll either play to kiss it on or around the back of it. Well, he could have played the half ball because they missed it the way the whites finished. Because the whites finished nowhere. 59. So he may have been playing the little thin cannon there. Let's just have a look how close he got to the red. Yeah, he could have been. 60. He really is so focused here this evening and already 60 points in front. So he doesn't have to go into the four reds. He normally would do, but he knows he only needs this red to leave Stephen needing a 67. snooker. So what a start after their mid-session interval. 68. Stephen just left a red over the corner pocket and he's had to sit in the seat and watch this. Seventy-five. The break seventy-five. A possible sixty-seven left. 
76. So possible 142. If he gets a cannon on that one, I think. Well, he hit the red full. He's still okay. He's got them to the middle pocket. 83. Well, he just knew there was going to be an explosion somewhere this session. When I say an explosion at high century, this could be the second highest of the tournament. Yes, Joe Perry still holds the high break with a break 91. of 145. £17,600 for the high break prize. Ninety-nine. One hundred. <laughs> He's got a terrific support here, but it has to be said, Stephen Hendry, a lot of support here also. One hundred and seven. It took less than seven minutes this century break, as we all know. He's Made a 147 in less than seven minutes, but early part of this break, he was having to move the cue ball into positions to pot these reds. The break had been absolutely flawless. 113. 150. Yes, he's made two maximums in under seven minutes. And the one in 1997, five minutes and 20 seconds here. I don't think that'll ever be equaled in the history of the Embassy World Championship. One hundred and twenty two. One hundred and twenty seven. That was a difficult one. But what a fantastic start. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan starts the second session of this semi-final with a magnificent break of 127 and he extends his lead to four frames to one. Yes, and Ronnie once again bringing out the uh, glass of warm water in his cup there. Stephen Hendry taking a sip of the cold one and uh, it must be a little bit chilly out there, Dennis, because Ronnie has been warming his hands all evening. Very unusual for the Crucible Theatre. It's usually a bit too hot. Maybe it was a bit too hot and now we're a little bit too cold. It's a bit like the three bears. <laughs> that was just what the doctor ordered for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Of course, Stephen Henry played just the one bad shot and Ronnie clears with 127. He's not done a lot wrong, Stephen Hendry. He's got nothing to worry about yet. You're always going to have a bad session during the World Championship. The key, as Dennis will tell you over the years, uh, having lost a session 8 0, of course, in winning the world, the key is to, you know, try and get back into the match. Now, what Stephen's going to do now Frame is get six. back into this Ronnie and not Sullivan lose to worse than 5 3. So frame six, Ronnie O'Sullivan establishing a 4-1 lead with that break of 127. Time to try and dam it, dam, you know, to limit dammitation. Uh, Ronnie has broken off quite nicely. Left a shot to nothing, which Stephen hasn't got. So he has to be very, very careful here not to lose this session. 5-3, he'll be happy now. Anything worse could be disaster. One. Oh, that one pot. And he's got the gap for the black. He would have been playing for the pink, so this is a little bit fortunate, but look at the way the reds are spread. Dare we say it? Eight. Nine. 
Nein. I must admit, I said in his quarterfinal, I'd never seen Ronnie so focused. 16. And he's carried that into the semi final. No attempt to stay 17. on the black, even though they were perfectly placed. He's much more concerned about the frame. Yes, even when Ronnie won this uh, wonderful championship a couple of years ago or so, he never played like this. This is the, as good as I've ever seen Ronnie O'Sullivan play. 24. One of them has won it seven times. The gentleman at the table has won it once. Thirty. That's quite an 31. amazing stat for a lot of people when you think Ronnie has only won the Embassy World Championship once. He's been a pro 12 years. And the way he's playing here, he wants to put that right. He wants a second title. 39. Well, Stephen Hendry, I'm sure, will be starting to worry. Because I can honestly only remember him playing two bad safeties. 46. Two relatively easy pots missed. And there's a slight chance 47. he could be going 5-1 behind. I think it's a big chance, isn't it, Willie? With two loose reds and he's just making his mind up whether to bring a few more into play. Took the risk. 54. He needs to pull a good pot out to keep this going. And he has to be careful now that he's opened the reds up. One miss could leave Stephen Hendry with a chance to get right back into this frame. Key pot coming up. 55. Do you know, I was watching some of the audience there, Willie, and some of the ladies, and when he knocked that long red in, they were shaking their head 62. in amazement. Yes, once he had a bad kiss on the bunch, 63. he was handy that that finished virtually dead straight. But still had to be played, and played perfectly. So, red killer red. And five ones a reality. 66. 67. And Stephen, well, you just can't do a single thing about this. He's done it to so many people over the years, and he'll just get himself ready for the next frame. Oh. Wow. That black almost jumped off Roddy the table. Sullivan. was frame ball is 67 in front with still 67 on the table if that simple black goes in end of frame now watch this well, Stephen decided to leave Ronnie a tempter with the black he needs five reds, five blacks to tie. So his purpose is left Ronnie a tempter, just in case he gets a chance to do that. You can see Ronnie just shaking his head there. He's reluctant to take the long pot on, but he's taking it on. Oh, why is he reluctant? Super shot. One. 
Ronnie O'Sullivan. Stephen and Henry wanting no more of that frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan looking not unlucky, I should say, not to make a century. The 67 was more than enough. He now leads by five frames to one. Both players have left the arena here. Well, Stephen's still there. Ronnie's left the arena. So we'll pick the commentary up when Ronnie returns. Seventh frame, Stephen Hendry to break. Ronnie O'Sullivan scored 199 points. And Stephen didn't manage to get one. But he didn't have a chance. He needs at least one of the next two frames. <laughs> Will he take this long one on? It's the only red he can see. You know what he does, if he gets half a chance, he'll have a go. Remarkable. Remarkable. 199 points without having a shot in those last two frames. That wasn't even a half chance. That was about a two in ten pot. Hadn't quite got the angle to pot the black and cannon the red next to it just Eight. to open the black up, but he's still okay. Nine. The first chance Stephen gets, he'll try and get those two reds away from the black. And he might be able to do it this time if he gets the correct angle on the black. He can cannon the red just above it, and that will open things up. Fifteen. Needs to get somewhere near the circle to leave the, the angle on the black. He might 16. be a bit straight on it now. <coughs> Just a slight bit of angle to work with there. In fact, the red goes. 23. Now, can he avoid the kiss on the... Black, if so, he'll have to screw back and force that red away from the black. Excellent. 24. Excellent. We've seen some great positional shots tonight from well, the, the two greatest break builders of all time. They hardly ever play a wrong shot at this end of the table. Yes, we've seen it so many times with the Thirty blacks one. tied up. The first chance they get, they'll clear it. Now this is a bit awkward because of where the pink is to 
cannon into them. It's so easy if you force this type of shot, you can slip off the side of the reds and away up the table. So that's why he's not attempting it. He'll probably play for the blue here. Stephen prefers to go into the reds from the blue. He'd have been disappointed to have left the white where it was off the black. He wanted to be on that virtually dead straight. He'll even be more disappointed now to see that the reds come across and left this absolute certain opening red. One. Mm, Ronnie purposely tried to finish low on the black there to play the cannon into the pink. But I don't know whether they can hold it from there. Anywhere near the circle, he leave the red next to the black. He's okay there. The red just to the left of the black is on. Eight. Well, whatever colour he decides to play on. There's a bit of value in playing the screw into the pack here. It's going to be on pink or, or black if it works, but... See, how many players, Dennis, would have played that Nine. shot? Not many. He's unlucky not to be nicer on a colour than this. There's about two players in the world that have played that. Everybody else has been playing it for blue or bought colour. between yellow and brown. And back again. But it's caught the yellow. This red will still cut. I don't think you can hold for the black though, so it may have to go up for blue or bought colour again off this red. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, the side he put on that, credit to perfection. <coughs> Just watch the cue ball 20. when it hits the cushion. Just comes right back towards the blue. The normal angle would have taken it onto the cushion. Another good chance. As he came to the table, 39 points behind, but he's only probably one, maybe two pots away from making this a frame win opportunity. This will clear the pink spot. Pink or black. 21. Which one, whichever avails the best position. If he rolls the black, he can leave the two reds just nicely on for the corner. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. It's every red pots now, but the pink's actually just obscuring the two reds into that right-hand corner. Ronnie's just having a little look there, whether he can pot the bottom, the middle one of those three. Now if that pots, he's no need to play for the pink off this red. But if it doesn't pot, he's in time for... It's very close, isn't it? The middle one of those three, they want to just come around to have another look. This decides whether to get on the pink here, whether he thinks that the reds are potable. He feels that they are. But they are available in the middle as well. It must be tight, he's had another look.
That's perfect. It obviously pots who wouldn't have played there otherwise. 42. Forty-three. Forty-nine. Fifty. Bit straight on the black, but should be okay. Now you can see the angle to screw straight back off the cushion. Fifty-seven. And this is going to hurt Stephen Hendry because he was in first. Fifty-eight. Sixty-five. Sixty-six. Perfectly on the blue. Just needs the blue. You can't do anything about this. Seventy-one. Stephen missed a... Well, it wasn't an easy red that he missed. Seventy-three. He didn't get as far over into the table as he needed. 76. And you only need to make one mistake when Ronnie's playing like this. 80. 85. Ninety-one. Unbelievable stuff from Ronnie O'Sullivan. In the last three frames, he's had breaks of one, two, seven, sixty-seven, and now that ninety-eight, and he extends his lead to six frames to one. Well, it must be tough sitting in that seat at the moment. He had half a chance there, Stephen Hendry, of course, when he missed the red that we showed you during the end of Ronnie's break. But it was the bad shot, really, on the black to have left that red three-quarter ball. And uh, Stephen's just had no table time, Dennis, has he? That's what's the problem. Yes, when he did break down, he hadn't got the angle to screw into the reds. The pink was blocking it, so he decided to play for the loose red and then get on the blue, but he didn't quite get on that red as he intended, and after that, well, let's just sit down and watch a genius at work. Thank you, final frame of this session. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Settle down now, thank you. Laurie Allendale asking for a little bit of quiet for the final frame of this, well, a masterclass of break building from O'Sullivan in the last three frames. But Stephen Hendry, I go back to what I've said before. I think he's played four bad shots in this session and he's 6 1 behind. Tough game. Cracking safety shot. There's no way back to bulk or no easy way back to the bulk area. There's a gap right through the reds to the one near the cushion here. He's got
got to be careful with this one because this red might just pass the black if he doesn't catch it right and he nestles onto it. Well, you miss <laughs> for Stephen Hendry. How close did that get to the red? But these are the rules the referee has got to call a miss because it's so easy to hit one of the other reds. Now there's reds on so he can have another go at this but look how close this got when it left the cushion. It skimmed past the red. A bit more pace this time. If he hits it half ball It's far enough off the cushion, I think, to not go past the black. Stephen's looking at it. Maybe it still goes past the black. It does. And it's there. One. There's the Stephen Hendry fan. Hoping beyond hope that Stephen Henry can win this last frame of this session. He's played in over 16 quarterfinals and above in this illustrious championship. Never, after a quarterfinal stage, Eight. has he ever lost a session 6 2 or 7 1 after the quarterfinal stage. This could be the first time. Nine. Well, it's certainly. Uh going to be 6-2 but I think Stephen would settle for 6-2 because when you play a four session semi-final there's always a good 16. chance to come back even from 7-1 and there's no one more experienced 17 and Stephen Hendry and playing the long matches here at the Crucible this is one of those shots where Stephen will play a deep screw. He wants to avoid the one at the bottom of the pack and screw into the middle one of the three reds and try and push those into play. Just keep an eye on the cue ball here because he'll be trying for these two reds to the right of the black. There you go, you see? And that's absolutely played to perfection. Once again, whenever you're commentating on Henry and O'Sullivan, they never refuse the correct shot. And that was correct. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Crucible Theatre has gone deathly quiet. Forty. Five reds. Five blacks. Stephen's extra four has come from that foul when Ronnie O'Sullivan failed in his attempt to hit the red. Wouldn't this be amazing? He loses session six to a make a maximum. Trust me, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. And Stephen Hendry has made more maximum breaks than any other player. He's made eight. In fact, he's made seven on television. These reds are absolutely perfect.
didn't play that great. It. But he could leave himself a half ball black. Well, Ronnie O'Sullivan 49. knows what it's like about making maximums. He's made six in pro competition. Fifty six. Oh, we got a heavy contact, but he's still okay. And this time, well, you could hear the crucible audience groan when that bad contact occurred, but it hasn't spoiled things. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. Those four reds, all available into the middle, all available into the right corner. See, he's got a choice of reds to get back to the black. Seventy-two. Six one behind. This is a great effort. After the next black, the frame safe, so we can really concentrate on the one four seven. How's the cue ball? It's still okay. Eighty. And even Ronnie O'Sullivan now would like to see Stephen Hendry make a maximum. Mm, looked a bit fed up there. Oh no, he snooped. 81. There was no real need to take that risk there because it was possible, but it, there you see that young man, he knows the aim of the 147. Listen, he's not finished yet. The frame's safe. Have a go off the cushion, Steve, and try and pot the black. What about for 17,600? Pot the pink Thank and you. make a 146. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's gone off the cushion. <laughs> Best of luck. Get in, black. <laughs> the Crucible crowd say get in. A magnificent session of snooker from these two great, great players. The handshake, O'Sullivan delighted. He's took the first session 6-2. The Crucible audience give both players a standing ovation.